commas are often quite difficult to understand where they go. There's even differences between the US and UK use of comma. But let's go ahead and look at how you use a couple commas together, that is two commas. It's a bit of a special case, but it's very clear in its rules. So you use two commas around things like abbreviations, professional titles, and non-restrictive adjective clauses. Here's a little sentence that has all of those together. You can see, for example, Alex Smith, PhD, comma before, comma after. And you pay attention there to that little bit. Let me draw it up here very clearly. So we have Alex Smith, comma, no space before the comma, one space after, then his title is PhD. That's a special title, that's the way you write it, PhD. And then a comma after, no space before the comma, one space after, has, and then we have more stuff. Inside of this sentence, we have a non-restrictive adjective clause. Alex Smith, PhD, has left for Antarctica, comma, where it is now winter, comma, and is meeting with Laurie Anderson, comma, vice president, comma, to discuss ice cube manufacturing. That's a great little example sentence because it has all the places you would use double commas. Let's look at it a little bit more carefully, uh, one at a time, so you get the idea clearly. So when you write an abbreviation in a sentence, you need to have two commas. That is a comma before and a comma after. Here are some examples you're probably familiar with, but you didn't really know how the commas worked. Etc. is an example. If you have etc. inside your sentence, you need to have a comma before and a comma after. I.E., E.G., B.A., which means your undergraduate degree, Ph.D., M.B.A. All of these need a comma before and a comma after. Let's take a look at a couple simple examples. Bill Chen, Ph.D., so that's a title, so there's a comma here and there's a comma here. No space before, one space after. Let's look at this next example. Books, pencils, erasers, etc. I think everybody knows this is a list, right? We have a list here. Very common to use a list, and everybody knows every item needs a comma. But etc. means more, right? It means and more. But etc. needs to have a comma before it. Now, if it's the end of the sentence, then you have a period only. But in this case, it's not the end of the sentence. It's still in the middle of the sentence. So you have to have another comma afterwards. No comma, no space before the comma, one space after. So comma, comma, two commas. Books, pencils, erasers, etc. are important to students. A more complicated use is called the non-restrictive adjective clause. How does the non-restrictive adjective clause work? Well, there's a simple way to look at this, and that is, if the clause can be taken out of the sentence, and it will not change the meaning of the sentence, then it's a non-restrictive adjective clause. Let's look at an example. Rose's car, which was older than I, looked very beautiful. So this little bit here, which was older than I. If we took that out of the sentence, just removed it, then the sentence would read, Rose's car looked very beautiful. So is that the same idea? Rose's car, which was older than I, looked very beautiful, or Rose's car looked very beautiful. The idea is almost the same which was older than I, that's extra information. That's not really the key information. You don't need that information for the sentence to be complete. So because it's extra, because you can cut it, then it's a non-restrictive adjective clause. And because of that, you need to have the comma before, beginning here, and the comma after, ending there. So that's the double comma for the non-restrictive adjective clause. 
Let's look at the next example. Last year, comma, which was the year of the dragon, comma, I got married. Now usually when you have the beginning of the sentence has a time, like this, last year, you have a comma because this is an introductory clause. Then you would say last year, comma, I got married. Would that be okay? Sure, that would be okay. Does that make sense? Last year, I got married. Hmm. Okay, that makes perfect sense. But what about this year of the dragon? Well, this is extra information, not required information. If we cut it out, if we just cut it, just begin right there and cut, 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 cut that all out, does the sentence still have the same meaning? Yes. So this is a non-restrictive adjective clause, which means you need to have a comma before it and a comma after it. Mary Smith, who is my friend, will come to class tomorrow. Mary Smith will come to class tomorrow. Hmm. So that's very clear. She'll come to class tomorrow. Can I cut that out? Yes, I can cut this out about my friend. Does it still make sense? Yes, it still makes sense. So that is a non-restrictive adjective clause, and you need to have a comma before it and a comma after it. A non-restrictive adjective clause can be used as a separate sentence, actually, and it adds more meaning to the first sentence. So you could take that non-restrictive adjective clause and you can make another sentence. For example, last year I got married. It was the year of the dragon. You see that? Isn't that very cool? Two sentences. So the non-restrictive adjective clause is like the second sentence is brought into the first sentence and you put a comma before and a comma after to show that this is a separate kind of extra idea added on, not core. Mary Smith will come to class tomorrow. She is my friend. You see? So this is two sentences originally was one sentence, we can make it two sentences. So when you put something into your sentence that's extra, remember if it's a non-restrictive adjective clause, you need to have that comma before and that comma after. Do not use commas for restrictive adjective clauses, however. A restrictive adjective clause helps to tell the meaning of a sentence, and it cannot be removed. So let's take a look at these examples here. The one whom I love most left for America. Okay, so I guess this I love most bit here. The one, the one, and then take this here, whom I love most, right down to there. Okay, now what if we cut that? What if we cut this bit, whom I love most? The one left for America. Well, that's very unclear, because it says the one, but who is the one? The one is actually this whom I love most. So you cannot cut that out. So you cannot do that. That is not a non-restrictive adjective clause, and you have no comma before and after that, because it must be there. It's key to the meaning of the sentence. Let's look at the next example. Managers who promote productivity should be rewarded, okay? Managers who promote productivity. So this is the adjective clause. What kind of managers who promote productivity? Can I cut this? Managers should be rewarded. Hmm, that's actually a pretty good sentence, right? Can I say that? Managers should be rewarded. Hmm, that makes sense. That's a clear sentence. It has a subject, it has a verb. But you know what? That doesn't have the same meaning. Managers should be rewarded means all managers should be rewarded. But that's not my meaning. My meaning is managers who promote productivity. That's only some managers. So you see, if we cut it out, then the meaning of the sentence has changed. And if the meaning changes, you can't do that. You do not use commas. So no comma before, no comma after. He who studies hard shall pass the examination. So he who studies hard. Can we cut that? Let me try. He shall pass the examination. Is that a good sentence? Yes, that is a good sentence. He shall pass the examination. But who is he? That doesn't make sense. He is, we don't mean like he one person, but we mean 
He as in any human, any person who studies hard shall pass the exam. If you don't study hard, can you pass? Maybe, maybe not. But if you do study hard, you can pass. So that's a different meaning. So you cannot put a comma before or after. You need to have no commas there. Cars that are red are usually fast. Cars that are red are usually fast. Let me cut that out and just say cars are usually fast. Is that a good sentence? Again, perfectly good sentence to say cars are fast. But is that true? Maybe, I guess. But that's not what I said. I said red cars, right? So different meanings. So you cannot put a comma before and after on that one. Okay, so that's how to use the double comma, two commas together, a non-restrictive adjective clause, and abbreviations and titles. <laughs>